All right. And we are recording. Hi, guys. So this is the first time that you have seen me on screen since, I think, this year. <laughs> I think this is the first time. And I am here with, oops. Me? Yes. I'm Carrie from Carrie's Mystical Musings. And below us, we have... Hi. <laughs> um, Antoinette from Antoinette Tarot and Jewelry. Hello, guys. And Thank girls. you, ladies. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gents. Thank you guys for joining me today. Um, Courtney could not be here today, but she's probably going to be, you know, watching it later. Um, she couldn't, she couldn't make it. She wasn't feeling up to it, but she did also partake in a lot of this right along with us. Um, and she did provide a couple of these questions. So what we did was a past life, the club, essentially, I created like a Facebook little chat group for the four of us ladies. And I contacted each of the ladies because I was going to be doing some past life work. And I knew that Carrie was going to be doing some archetype work. And so I contacted her because it was going to, I was going to be doing archetype work as, you know, along in with the past life stuff. And I'm like, you want to join me and do this? She says, yeah. And Antoinette did too. And Courtney did. So they joined me and you guys have seen my video already showing what mine entailed. Well, these are the ladies that joined in on it every week. So we're going to talk a little bit about the process and we've got questions that we're going to go through and dissect. And yeah, so let's, do you guys want to add anything before we start with the questions? No, no, I think okay, that's good. <laughs> oh, and this is Carrie's face. <laughs> yeah, hi. <laughs> you guys are so used to always seeing her hands. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> All right, so this is the first question, and this was one that I posed to the ladies. So. Did you go into this experience with a focus of what you wanted to work through? And did you find what you were looking for? Anybody go? I'll go. If that's okay. <laughs> okay. So did I go into it with a focus? I thought I was going to go into it with a focus actually to like dive into what a block was like uh, between me and maybe the divine feminine, because I always have a, hard time connecting to that energy but it turned out I didn't <laughs> do that exactly and I just um really looked at a couple lives for specific reasons but I think I don't know if that's a later question that I'll get into but then um like I, I wanted to explore relationships and um blocks in other areas and then two lives I just went ahead to let them ex uh, show me what I needed to know in this moment. Does that answer that? I think I answered that. Yeah. Right. And did you find what you were looking for in the process? I did. I did. Um, the two that I went in for a specific goal and to have that ex uh, specific experience with uh, looking into those lives really like enlightened a dynamic of a relationship that I was going through. So that was really interesting um, how that one played out. And um, just the other things that arose in the the readings, it was just, it was really weird how certain things actually occurred almost at the same time period of my life now, if if that makes sense. I hope I answered that. <laughs> I mean, I had that plane in my head. <laughs> do you want to answer, Tony, or do you want me to go? Um, I'm happy to go if you want. Um, so I didn't really, I, I joined a week after you, didn't I? So I didn't come in fully prepared for what to expect. Um, and in fact, even how, down to how to ask the cars for a past life. I think our first discussion um, between myself and Rochelle was um, behind the scenes and I started focusing originally to do with the uh, black moon in Lilith in Taurus not quite sure why because I thought maybe if I focused on the black moon in Lilith because it was in retrograde I think in my um, real sky sidereal sky chart so it's like 
trying to find something to pinpoint. Um, I think that sort of went by the by in the end because the life comes out as it wants to come out. So that was the only thing I was looking at. I was wondering whether I focused in there um, around how that was affecting me in my seventh house of others. Um, I think in general, though, the past life maybe answered some of that, but not specifically that. I think it surprised me. Okay. I do remember that that's what you had asked originally. And I was thinking, that's kind of interesting <laughs> about the Black Moon Lilith. Because you know what? That's also really cool to do black or to do like past life stuff around your astrology, just to go have your chart in front of you and do past life just based off of that, asking questions and stuff. So mm. that just gave me an idea of something else I can do. <laughs> um, oops. So did I go into this experience? I did. I went into this experience because I have a lot of like anger around inequality with like the divine feminine. And just, I mean, it's like the stuff that's happening in the world right now. You know what I mean? And that's been happening for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, mm -hmm. when it comes to women and equality based in this patriarchy. And so, and not just that it's all masculine that's like toxic. There's a lot of femininity that's toxic that just like also suppresses the, the feminine principle. But I also feel like the feminine, feminine principle is emerging. And with that, a whole bunch of stuff gets drudged up. So initially, I went into this wanting to know more about maybe, I mean, beyond the obvious. I mean, I'm a woman. Of course, I'm going to be feeling that way. But it seems like even more so. You know what I mean? So that's what I went into it. And I do feel like my first life... I was like the woman behind the man, which I didn't get into great detail on my video, but I was like the powerful woman behind the man who had the face of the power, right? So right, right out of the gate, I was like, some shit, you know, see, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm already swearing. I said not. <laughs> but so yeah, that kind of got me. And then the second life, See, I don't even remember what they all, the second life, I was a man. The third life, but I think he was a womanizer. So maybe a lot of that was shadow also. You know what I mean? Shadow that I was dealing with, with the divine feminine. Then the third life, I was like an, like an Amazon <laughs> warrior woman, right? Mm -hmm. So they only lived within like a female society. And so... You know, they were the ones that were in power. So did I find what I was looking for? Essentially, yes and no. I feel like I've still got more work to do around those. But mm -hmm. I do feel like it did uncover a lot of stuff. So that's my answer. <laughs> my long answer. I, I love the fact that you're an Amazonian woman at some point. <laughs> Could you just see that? I mean, I've got like the lion's hair, right? We're <laughs> not <laughs> Leo, so. Like um, Wonder Woman. You know, I... Yes. <laughs> what were you going to say, sweetheart? I had just said that uh, I went in to look at the, the, it struck me when I was listening to you talk about your lives. And I had said, oh yeah, I went in this to look into the divine feminine, but it kind of went the other way. But in my very first life, I was the woman and in that lifetime and was giving information to like, so that was really the life that I think that was heavily present in like a female um, identity. So yeah, I guess that did come up. And I said, no, no, it didn't, <laughs> but it did. And that struck me when I was listening to you. Excellent. So here is the second question. Did you find any connections within your possible DNA lineage or ancestry? Anyone? Anyone? Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. 
Okay. With my lives, I was just telling the ladies before we started this, my first one was like the rise of a civilization at the time of Atlantis, which was the beginning of it. So that could have been like, I don't know, 36,000 years ago. No, I did not find a DNA lineage or ancestry in that because how could I, right? Um, although I have always been extremely interested in like ancient civilizations and Atlantis and since I was a kid, but I mean, how many people are like conspiracy theorists and into mythologies that are also interested in those same things? You know what I mean? So it could just be that common interest kind of thing. Um, the second life, I, I don't know whether or not that who I thought I was, because it was 2000 years ago. I have no idea whether or not that would be. The third life was like 8,000 years ago <laughs> in BC. So I have no idea. The last life, quite possibly, because it was of, I am of that lineage, of that um, uh, nationality. That's all I know. So what about you guys? You want me to go? Yep, go for it. Okay. okay. So um, looking at the time frames, like you, it was, it's hard to like go back to you know, 1300, uh, maybe 1600. I may be able to find someone or something, but I wasn't focused on necessarily the person um, and connecting. I was more like in the mindset where I wanted to know what the deal was as far as like trauma and lesson and, and that sort. But in my one life, not, I mean, I don't, I don't know necessarily lineage, but I had a connection to the place. So that was really interesting where um, it wasn't like the connection DNA wise, but I, I did have that connection in the place that that life occurred. And it just happened to be a place that my husband and I vacation and frequent and, you know, all the time that in is the wild. exact same area, you know, and that was very, very interesting the way that played out. There probably is, honestly, though, there probably is some sort of lineage or something there that you just haven't discovered. The fact that it's so closely intertwined in what you guys do now, you know right. what I mean? <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. and is it like exact place or is it like, was it like? Um, it is, from what I could find out, it is like almost, it's pretty much almost the exact place that we go to all the time wow yeah mm -hmm. that's interesting <laughs> that's really yeah. cool what about you honey Tell um me. so my one life uh i did discover synchronicities to names of places and places within my life and also the ancestry section because parts of my family now, the rumours are that the, there are surnames within certain areas of my family that relate to the area that this um, life unfolded or links into. So um, it's definitely part of the continent anyway. So yeah, there is definite links or, or I'm calling them synchronicities as you, as you know, because sometimes it's easy to make things mm -hmm. fit the box. So I'm going with synchronicities at the moment, but it actually probably is all very um, in tune and linked. I haven't had time to delve any deeper, but as you know, this is like going doing a history lesson, isn't it? It's um, like researching yeah. a family tree in its own right for the, for the life mm -hmm. and the work that that involves is huge. So mm -hmm. I'm happy with where I sit at the moment. You know, this isn't one of the questions, but I just wanted to also, you guys know this, but, and I might, I don't know if I said this on my channel, but when I found who I thought that I was in the second life that I did, I specifically, after that life said, 
before I did any other drawings. Do I do not want to discover who I possibly was because that just brought up way too much. It just muddied the water, so to speak, for me. You know what I mean? Because then I was going between going by Google. What did Google say? And did this fit with my cards? And I just totally missed the point of why I was doing it to begin with. You know what I mean? I didn't want to find the person. And initially, that's not what I was looking for either. And it just kind of happened. And then dates and synchronicities, like you said. But after that, I did not want to know. Because even if you think about this, whatever is on Google doesn't mean that's the actual history either. Yeah. you know, It can be AI kind of written, can't it? Or yeah. the winners are the, the winners, winners of the history. Oops, because I'm too loud. But yeah, it's the one to the history. And doesn't mean that's how these things actually unfolded if we had been there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So the next question. What did you feel the most important component of the reading was? Knowing who you were as a person or what you went through instead? So whoever. Um, so knowing who I was as a person, probably I felt was more important part of the reading. Um, that's only now that I reflect and look back on it. Obviously, at the time, I didn't really care too much. And um, my whole reading unfolded synchronistically anyway for me. So I didn't have too much of an experience of an uncomfortable um, finding for myself. So it was all very pleasant in the way that mine unfolded for me. And, and really, it's kind of who I was as that person and how that life played out, really, that um, took my interest anyway, was the most takeaway for me. Yeah. What about you guys? You Carrie? Go? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, what was most important for me was I, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily the person. I mean, I wanted to know my identity as like, you know, gender or, and the role that I played, but to like, link it into an actual person of okay I was you know John Doe and such wasn't that wasn't my um, goal of going into it like I said I wanted to know more of what lesson I had to learn did I learn it? what kind of karma was you know still playing out was it resolved who was in my life with me are they in my life now those were my main um factors for this time of going past lives. I've done past life work before and way back when, it, like years and years ago, it was really cool to try to link you to somebody that was real to see, but it's like, well, what kind of information are you really going to find out about them? I mean, if they're just some regular Joe, you know, on, you're, you're not going to know anything else anyway, but maybe a, a possible name and if they had a family depending on what kind of records were kept at that point in time you know so being older and, and you know further along in my practice now it's just that was not what was important to me yes I wanted to know like who I was as a person and and that but a name and connecting it and and that form wasn't it was more about the lesson the trauma and that sort Michelle? So for me, knowing who I was as a person, I look at it like what kind of personality I had, what my life looked at, you know, the, the circumstances, the environment, that was all very important to also understanding what lessons I had in that life. So it was all, I felt all very important, knowing who I was as a person, as well as knowing um, like the lessons, how I died, being able to connect that life, like maybe how I died, like let's say for instance, just to give you an example, I have this fear of like the water, swimming in like the ocean or whatever, um, and of small places. So what if in a past life at a certain age, I died drowning, being stuck in 
a boat or something. And that's what is causing my fear or phobia in this life. So figuring that out could actually help me overcome that phobia in this life. But I mean, with all these recent shark attacks, I'm just, I ain't going in the water anyways, but I'm just saying. You know? So they were both really equally important to me. I think it's all part of the component. It's all part of it for me. So great question. Oh, gosh. The next one. Once you connected the dots in the reading, could you see a correlation between that life and you and the present moment? Did it bring up things uh, that you were wanting to change or work on? Carrie, you want to go first, honey? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that I'll one. go. Um, I actually did see a correlation because two of the lives um, – brought up my mediumship abilities and that and being able to see and, and that sort of thing in those lives like I can do you know now and those types of readings and everything so there there was a huge I would that was something I was not expecting in any way I, I did not expect that to show up like that in those uh, two other readings. So um, I found that very interesting that this ability that I have and share with others and, and that sort was also in other lifetimes um, with me too. So I'd like to do actually more past lives or look further into those two past lives to, you know, really get to the nitty gritty of all of that. And, um, or maybe to see if it, you know, shows up with others in my family and, and that sort of thing. Like we had talked to Michelle about lineage and, and that sort to see, you know, where this is also coming up maybe for others in my line. Yes. What about you, Tony? Um, so a couple of things. Um, my name, as you see on screen, Antoinette there, that is French. Um, the person the person that I was tonight or um, that is coming through as somebody I was once upon a time was French. Um, they had links to areas in France that are named the same as the school to which I attended here in England. Um, they have links to some major credit banks in France, which uh, link to surnames in my family and uh, locations. Um, they had um, other things on here. Gosh, I can't remember all of the things now that I kind of put down. Um, let's just wait for that to scroll by again, make sure I don't go off. I'm great on doing <laughs> tangents. Uh, once I connected the dots, reading correlations between, yeah. So, those were a couple of the things as I was talking about in my last answer, alluding to the synchronicities um, between us. Um, I think, and of course, this person was um, a devout Catholic, and um, that is something that I have been brought up to be as well, or you know, not given a choice of because you're born into it, you don't get an opportunity to decide. And same for this person as well, um, as his. Godfather was the Pope Pius the Ninth. So for me, every single life I could see a correlation. And I think it was you that said this, uh, Carrie, earlier. You know, like when you're looking at your cards, you can always find correlations, right? Mm -hmm. I, I can. But I think even more so than that, when you dug deeper into each little detail and how they connected to each other in order to build that whole storyline. And then look at how that storyline was actually affecting me now, because that was another thing that I went into in the beginning. It wasn't just about uh, the divine feminine. It was also about working on shadow work. The whole thing was about shadow work to begin with, right? anything that can help me in this life to be the best version of myself and to help me work through my own crap, you know? Mm -hmm. So 
I absolutely seen correlations with every single one of these for different things, though. Every single one of them. If we were to sit down, granted, there's personal stuff in there. You ladies know because I have gone through and shown the connection to each and every life. So it's. I think it's important work. Is it daunting? Oh my gosh, it was really daunting for me. It was because I think every single life. I was just, I'm not going to say I was a bad person, but I didn't always make the best choices for my life. Maybe the only choices choices that I knew in that time period and what my, you know, what I was facing, but to look at it now as this person, I was like, oh my God, did I really do that? I mean, no, I didn't do that, did I? I don't want to be this person, but I'm, I'm not that person. This person is not that person. I am this person because of all the crap that I went through already. And Lord knows with the time periods, like I said, you know, 36,000 years ago, 8,000 years ago, um, 2,000 years ago, clearly I've had a lot of life. So <laughs> hopefully I'm getting better with each one. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, definitely correlations. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Let me change this a second. Let me edit it so that I'm not scrolling. There we go. Is that a little better? <laughs> so, <laughs> do any of your past life resemble your current life? Yes. I have a French name still. <laughs> no. um, <laughs> that's what, that's the main thing. That's the main component. I'm Catholic, just like them. Like I've just said, so Catholic, French name, uh, similar names from the areas, still link into my family. Um, resembling my current life, my person was a go-getter. Um, they were very driven, I think, probably could be said the same for a lot of people but from my life perspective just while you were talking actually that last question um it was one of the questions you guys gave me on our last meetup um about around the ages and synchronicities and things there which slowly started to occur to me um however also just while Rochelle was talking is the person their life ended at 23 clearly I'm still here and for those who um, think I've got filters on, thank you. Um, but no, <laughs> I'm a lot older than that. Um, however, by the age of 23, I was, I think I had achieved a lot in my lifetime at that point. And I remember being somewhere in my early 20s and looking around myself and thinking, now what? Like, oh my God, life is so boring right now because I had... I had moved away. I had lived in London. I had got a career out there. I'd done things there. I had moved back to the area that I live in now. I had, um, I was in a steady relationship with somebody. I had, you know, qualified, changed career, got a new career, um, not using one that I'd gone to London for. And I had also bought a house by the age of 21. So by the age you got to 23, that's when I say life was feeling quite, look, you know um I had done all this stuff and my friends were now just coming out of university and because I had chosen a different route I, I chose not to university I tried to, I chose to do it through experience and on job learning spots and qualifications that way so I was in a very different place to them at that point in time as well so it was, it was just I remember being in a weird like kind of space in the like mid 20s to late 20s thinking like oh is this like really is this what life's got to offer <laughs> I go to work I pay the bills I hand out money and yada 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 and round it goes um so yeah so that actually I had achieved a lot before this person had died is my uh long-winded outrageous answer to that question so there is a resemblance in there so do you think that any of that could have been because of dying at the age of 23 that you I mean, maybe, yeah. need to get these things done before that time period. 
It could well have been. I don't think I had anything else pressing in my life. I mean, I already knew when I was 10 that I didn't want children. I didn't want family. I didn't want marriage. I didn't want conventional things. I already knew that. So those things weren't set out in my life plan moving forward. In fact, um, God love him. My partner wasn't in my life plan moving forwards either. He just oh. happened and was a lovely coincidence and is still in my life now, <laughs> which is a good job because we're about to have a 30th anniversary. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> in a few months off. Um, so yeah, so uh, as much as I joke about it, he never was, it never was a thing for me. Um, I'd always say, I don't want marriage, don't want this, don't want that. I don't want this like conform, Catholic conform nonsense shoved upon me. Um, but maybe that is some of the drive between like doing all these things and having these things. Um, and I did them all fairly independently without, you know, my parents behind me, my, my parents backing. Because here in England, at the time that I was a child, teenager, moving into my formative years, um, you could leave school at 16 here. So you'd leave school at 16 and you could actually come out of education completely. Or you could, there were other routes into further forms of what we call you know further education um so you come out with your gcses that could be it end of schooling or you can do others so i did some other stuff but as i say i did like this whole roundabouts thing moved away came back and so yeah i was fairly independent wow. getting getting out of that household and that environment that's very Which impressive I think my person that did. Age. to have yeah, a house did by that age is very impressive it is quite alien mm. i think i think it's quite unusual i don't recall a lot of other people around me doing similar things even those that didn't stay in education and did come out and start work at the same time as me i don't recall many people having <sighs> my dad was an accountant so um there are certain things drilled into me but it was my partner to be fair who came from nothing as well um, and a very poor background and it was his sister who moved into an early relationship that was his rock who said to him save and get a house just save and get a house so he was kind of in the background doing this and I'm I'm over here like why would I want to save with you because <laughs> what would I want to buy a house with you for like I want to buy my house why would I want to buy a house with you for her? <laughs> um, anyway it all worked out lovely and here we are you know what that's even the fact that you were like I don't, I'm not going to say afraid to commit, but the fact that that was not even part of what you thought you were going to be doing either. And yeah. maybe that has to do with dying at 23 in another, you know, another life. Yeah, because my person didn't get to that point because they were betrothed, but it never happened for them. So right. maybe, yeah, actually, that's a very good point. That's really interesting now that that, because yeah <laughs> and that's how these have worked so amazingly isn't it like these conversations here about our lives and people's perspective and outside views of what actually starts to like bring the oh yes factors back into it isn't it mm -hmm. this is the fun bit mm -hmm. so what about you Gary? So what about you Gary? oh i can hear me Wait, well, oh wait, I have to look at the screen. I was like, wait, what was the question again? Okay, um, <laughs> yes, I would say that they do. I mean, I already had talked about in the last one about how the mediumship is a part of my life now. But while you were talking, I was thinking, well, what other ways besides that? And I had, in this lifetime, I grew up in the church. Um, it was like heavily, since I was like five years old, it was a, Every Sunday you go to church and, and things like that until, I don't know, I was like 19 when I decided to, you know, move away from that. So I was thinking about the correlation with that in my other lives and how faith and religion had played a role and, you know, feeling one way or, or even that one, oh, what was that life where I had one certain faith that was more pagan and I felt that I had fallen in love with a Christian um, in that lifetime. That was really interesting, especially since I started moving away from, you know, what was ingrained in me as far as faith and, and the way I look at religion and um, coming into more of a stance of co-creating with the universe and not, you know, you can't have this where it was you know, 
what was that one um, life where I felt that the good deeds, I would be rewarded for the good deeds in that one lifetime with my faith and everything and moving away from that thought and getting to the point of knowing how I can co-create in that where I'm at now, which showed itself in other lifetimes too. I was thinking um, about that and that that plays a big role for me now and my how my viewpoint has shifted just in that faith aspect of everything and there are di- there was dynamics it, between me and a person that's in my life now a, in a couple different lives that appeared in my past life and the dynamic is kind of you know on on the, in the same realm that it was in that past life so that's obvious that stuff wasn't <laughs> That's obvious that stuff wasn't worked through (laughs) at that time. Unfinished business. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for me, do they resemble? I mean, none of my lives resemble my life now. I mean, I'm a housewife, middle-aged housewife with two kids. My first life, I was a really powerful woman who was behind a really powerful man or that people perceived to be powerful. Mm -hmm. I was not, I was very closed off. So I don't feel like I'm a really closed off person anymore. I feel like I, at least, I mean, you guys can attest for this or my family can, you know, I am a, a loving person who opens myself up to people. Now, if you wronged me, yeah, you're going to get the, see ya. (laughs) I can do that. Okay. But in general, or not even wronged me, but if I feel like we're not relationship, I I just don't want to waste my time anymore on relationships that I feel like are not good for me. And I feel like it's those, those lives that helped me realize what, how to say no to certain things um the second life to that one no I mean I don't see any well I do see one correlation in the second life with having the powerful father right I do see a correlation in this life uh with a relationship dynamic that's all I'm gonna say um the third life what was the third life The funny thing about that was, in that third life, her life kind of stopped when she got injured, right? She no longer felt like she was um, worthy or everything. She was just like pushed aside because she was no longer that warrior. She could no longer fight for that cause. So she like kind of retreated and you know, got really low, but while I'm healing from an injury. So maybe that came up because even though it said she died of like an an illness and a non-contagious illness and in a desert, I still feel like with the reading that I did, it's because she chose to like stop eating, stop drinking. She no longer had a will to live because she couldn't do the things that she had done before. And when you are going through an injury like mine, when sometimes you worry whether or not you're even going to be able to walk again, whether or not you have to worry about somebody else doing stuff for you all the time, I'll tell you what, it was a rough time to go through that. Because even like now, my husband, he's a sweetheart. He is the most wonderful man ever. He'll we'll make dinner. And, you know, I'm still like hopping along. As I walk, but I got both my hands. I'm not using a cane anymore. And he'll grab my plate or whatever and take it in where we're going to eat. I'm like, stop, put it down. Let me do it. He's like, I'm just trying to help. I'm like, but you're not helping because I need to be able to do these things for myself. You know what I mean? That's the only way I'm going to get back to being who I am is to be able to be independent and not count on you to do these regular damn things for me. So stop being so wonderful and let me be me, you know? And that's easier said than done because he just, he wants to help, right? But so I seen the correlation in that life. So 
how it resembled my life now. And I'm getting just past that right now. But I think that it showed me, don't let something like an injury or anything stop you. You just got to keep on friggin' going, you know? And then the last life, I did see a correlation because I also had an abusive relationship that I was in when I was younger. And, I, you know, I don't know many women that have not experienced some, some form of that in their life. Honestly, it's sad, but it's true. But I think I was the abuser in that life. And just to let you guys know a little bit about that, I'm getting a little personal here, but that's okay. Um, here about three years ago, two years ago, I had the man who was my abuser when I was 18, who I did put in prison, by the way, for abuse when I was 18 years old. He did go to prison for a couple of years for what he did to me. But he came back to me in a dream after, and this was, I mean, 30 years ago. So it was a long time ago. It was longer than 30 years ago. This was a long time ago. I mean, I've been with my husband for 34 years. So I hadn't thought about this man in a very long time. He came to me in a dream and he asked me for forgiveness. And of course I said immediately, my soul said, of course I forgive you. You know, I know that when people do these things, it, it's not like he, he wanted to say, well, I just want to be this abusive piece of shit. I just want to, it wasn't like that. And with many women that you talk to that are in abusive relationships, they're not like that either. That's why it's so hard to leave an abusive relationship, right? Because some of the times they're just wonderful. And then other times. So anyways, when he said that, and I said, yes, I woke up the next morning. And I was like, it's so weird. Why would I have this dream about him? Right? So I did some research and found out he had passed away like 10 years prior. And I think his soul was coming and asking for my forgiveness. And if I didn't forgive him, what does that mean about me being an abuser in another lifetime and somebody not offering me that same forgiveness? You know what I mean? So, yes, <laughs> that also changed the way that I perceive myself as well and perceive other people. Because it really puts into perspective that we are spiritual beings having a human experience, right? So Yeah, that's quite profound. Yes. So enough of that. <laughs> Thank you for so sharing. I, oh, no problem. Actually, let me let me edit this really quick and take it off the scroll. See? All right. Now let me show it. But do you see any lessons chronologically in your past lives that might have helped you in the next one? Or did history repeat itself? Anyone? I have one. Lots for you too. Oh, okay. I have one. So in past life number three, this is the life that where I was looking for my blocks to abundance, to success and um, that sort um, in that life, at age 18, that major thing happened where I wasn't able to, um, I, I had a whole other plan for my life as far as who I wanted to be with and, and so on, that my family in that life put a stop to it. And I had said that they had made me um, get involved with that other person. and that took my abundance away because um, he was using our family basically in that lifetime. And that all occurred at 18 and was without getting too personal as far as 18 in this life, present day, I had the same, I had choices made by my, by family that stripped my choices away in order to pursue abundance. And, you know, so I had put those two, like, you know, things together. It was really strange that at age 18, that same exact thing is in regards to abundance was taken from me at the exact same age in that life and in this life. And that, that was so 
I, that was one of the most interesting. I mean, I, I every all of this was interesting. I, I can't. I still to this day, and it's been what a week or whatever since we've been. I still think about these lives and that that we talked about with each other and everything. But there's just like certain things in each one of these lives that just stick in my head, and I think about on a regular basis. And that was one of them that that abundance was taken away at age 18, and the same thing happened this time. Wow. Uh, honestly, for me, and this was your question, Tony, right? Yeah. <laughs> and Tony only did one life for this one. I'm sure you're going to end up doing more, aren't you? I definitely will be, yeah. I don't know when, but yeah, because these things were deep, deep, long. Uh, yes, hours. yes. I will not make the mistake of doing four in a month again. It was nice. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it was a mistake, but it showed me that I think if I'm going to do, I'm going to do one a month so I can really just focus on that one and get as much detail as I can about it. Not actual details about who I was, but about the lessons in that life and the correlations and stuff. But the way that mine were, they jumped around. Like one was, uh, possibly 36,000 years ago, one was 8,000 years ago, one was 2,000 years ago, and one was like 300 years ago. So they didn't actually happen in any kind of chronological order, which also shows me that there's huge spans of time that I've still got to like focus on. Mm -hmm. um, so do I see any lessons chronologically from one to the next? Not really because of how it jumped around. But I'm sure if I had like my whole history, you know what I mean, laid out in front of me, like my whole roadmap, then I could probably see it. But right now, I don't have that bird's eye view yet. But rest assured, I'm going to be looking keep, for it. Yeah. Keep watching, folks. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I only did the one life. So that's why this question doesn't really um, fit in for me as well as it does for I felt you too. But the only answer I had for my lesson, really, the um, end thing of my lesson was legacy, um, which is slightly funny because I don't need a legacy <laughs> in this life. You know, I got to that point after driving I, that, that like hallelujah moment in this life of what the heck am I doing? Like, who is all this for? Like, why am I killing myself to, you know, do these things? Is it because I'm enjoying them or am I trying to prove myself to my parents because they don't pat you on the back and say, congratulations. Mm -hmm. And if they're not doing that, why? Because they want you to do better for yourself. But, and that was something I did see in the life of the person um, who came through in the cards for me. So that was my, mm -hmm. it was just that word legacy and the irony of it for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I keep doing that. I'm sorry. While you guys are talking, I'm just too into what you're saying that I'm not thinking about what I should be doing. At least I'm telling you. Okay. Now let me show it. What life changed a perspective or way that you looked at yourself? I mean, in a way, perhaps that you didn't see until you uncovered a previous life, like a detail or pattern. So for me, I don't think it really changed my perspective on myself. However, because I, at first, and I talked about this in my video, there was some shame there. Because like I said, I was like, I mean, when you first do and first start doing past lives, you want to see like all this really cool stuff, right? I mean, I did. Right. I've always been very attracted to like ancient civilizations. Well, that's probably why those are the, the ones that came through also for me. But as far as the shame, the shame didn't last that long for me because I realized in order to be the people that we are, we have to go through the things that we do in order to evolve. It's just like they say every generation gets better, even in families, because you either learn to overcome and break those chains or break those patterns, so to speak, 
from your, your parents and they from their parents and on and on and on. So each generation becomes better parents. Hopefully, you know, if you're doing it right, you become better. You evolve if you're trying to evolve. So, and that's my aim. So I honestly feel like maybe I didn't see it to the degree that I did until after doing this kind of work, how much we are just like actors playing roles, you know, and hence came my deck, the matrix matrix. (laughs) I'm not trying to plug it, but I'm working on the guidebook right now. And it was this stuff that actually really made me realize how much that is. Like we are sometimes good actors and sometimes bad actors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, ladies, I'm done. (laughs) Anybody? Um, I'll go. So I don't know if I necessarily, I don't think, I don't know if my perspective changed of myself because the the one life, even to this day, (laughs) you guys had to help me through that life because it was so off the wall for me of even comprehending a a possibility of it that, um, so I don't know if it necessarily changes the way that I look at myself. I think that, you know, we're all evolving souls. So I think like those were things I had to go through and learn and that, like you were just saying to progress to who we are to, and then, you know, if you believe in the reincarnation to begin with, because I mean, you have to believe in that in order to believe in the past lives. So um, I think that, I don't know. I I, I saw myself like not as necessarily me, but as a whole different person. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm just like spinning in circles here. So it's not like I. Do you think of it kind of like when we are in a different incarnation, it's a different personality altogether, or maybe just a part of our big soul in these different lives? Okay. Yes. That's exactly. kind of what I think yeah. too. Right. I mean, we have that lesson. I, I feel that lesson carries with us, you know, so, you know, you know, but it's like, so if I was this um, Dutch colonist or whatever that I was in that one, it's not like I identify as that now, you, you know, like that. So um, I don't know if I see myself any differently or, um the detail or pattern so to speak but uh they were all interesting in themselves the way that they appeared and i feel that like you know you had said that felt those certain lives appeared for you because of your interest in um the places and and um the idea of being or living or whatever in those lifetimes so that's just interesting the way that that occurred for you and where Mm -hmm. I was looking into like specific reasons or to find specific blocks and, and that sort. Um, so I think that the whole past, I mean, I don't know, I'm probably, I'm on a tangent, (laughs) but I think like the whole past life work in general, you can do it like free form, like, you know, we did on some Mm -hmm. of them, or like I didn't have a, very specific goal to go in and look at something to really give you give you that perspective on things that you learned and and a takeaway from all of that I don't even know if I answered that question I just you did I was just all over the place we okay. get you girl we get it <laughs> yeah, we understand <laughs> Oh, I can't say that the viewers are going to understand, but we get it. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> no, they'll get it. The people that are watching this understand this. Yeah, okay. drop into comments below what you got from that. <laughs> <laughs> We're testing. <laughs> what about you, you <laughs> <laughs> Um, So, uh, you know, as I said, a lot of mine came in on synchronicities, ones I've already mentioned, and um, another one which we started having a discussion about, which is one of the aha moments, I suppose, was, um, so my person died in, um, 
Hang on, I've written it down somewhere. So they participated in the Anglo-Zulu War in 1879, and that was when they died, and at age 23, and the 23 being the key bit here. Um, and then when I was kind of beyond, you know, achieving everything by the age of 23 and being bored myself, um, I my, I lost my grandfather um, at that age as well. And I hadn't seen him for many years. And he didn't have a lot of money, but he divided up some money and gave it out to the grandkids. And it was a lot of money for him to give to me. Um, because I had already done the things that I maybe would have used it for, like a deposit on a house, um, would have been what I'd have done with it to you know, put it somewhere important to respect what it took for him to have that money. Um, so legacy finance and things, I thought was always because of my dad being an accountant, um, do you know that like you can only buy what you can afford, you never do finance, you don't do this, you, you don't do that um, type thing. Um, so I have always had that appreciation of what the pound, the dollar, the cent, the whatever costs what it takes to earn that, to make it, to do with it, and to spend sensibly, not always frivolously. So with my granddad's money, I then decided to do something with it that um, was a treat, but equally a semi-investment. I wanted to buy a pair of diamond earrings um, all those years ago. And I did eventually get around to ordering said earrings. Um, and when they arrived, they were not perfect. One was a big black mark in it and one was lovely and sparkly. So they went back and that was the only pair I could afford at that point. That was substantially nice. So they went back and I was like, I can't spend his money on that just because I want a pair of diamond earrings. And that money has sat with me ever since, waiting to do something with, but not on something that's going to lose its keep, you know, become worthless one day it had to be something again that still came with me for 23 years it. yeah I, I, um and then recently it would have been the sort of 23 years anniversary of my age 23 years and um i from when i got the money um i was going to i had it all planned so there was a work trip going to um Birmingham here where we have the jewelry quarter that's not where work was going we were going up for a conference or something else and I had worked out that I could probably book an appointment at the jewelry quarter take some hours nip off over there go and pick these diamonds by hand so I knew that they were a matching pair and have this pair of earrings made granted I have to put some money in towards it now but that's my toss-up for all these years going by um so that was planned I was going to go do that and then the other day my matron came into me and she just said look do you really need to go because actually we need to send a senior with the guys that are going out to present their cases at the conference um and I need to tag along because of other circumstances around my working rotor for that area of time in September coming and she said we can't cover the other things that you're needed here for would you mind greatly I have that that's not a you have the option to say yes or no that's a step sideways you're not going <laughs> so I lost so I lost it again it's gone so that's gone so I'm gonna have to plan now now that I'm out of my 23 year 23 year cycle hopefully maybe in the next year or two I might get around to this because <laughs> but the funny thing about that is though and I'm not sure whether or not you want to talk about this what was he there for um so yeah the, the area was something to do with there were diamond fields in that area and I know we talked about that online but I can't see where I wrote the actual stuff I've lost the information I wrote about it but there was something linked to like uh, diamond fields in the area and I don't know if that's why he was there scoping or what but they happen to be in that area um so it's mixed information about what he was doing there he was out scoping kind of on a um like a uh, inspection type mission but as I have alluded to my own drive to do things his drive that day was he left earlier than they should have on their um, exercise so it was his drive to go too early to get things done to prove himself that actually caused his death in this instance because um, had he have gone at the right time with the watch posts out and the people that had gone ahead to scout the fields before he went out they wouldn't have been ambushed and he wouldn't have died so yeah but the yeah, correlation between the diamonds and you still not getting them yet. Diamonds 80 still haven't got them. 
there could be something in that as well. <laughs> like, yeah, I should just swap to emeralds. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I need emeralds or some rubies or something. Maybe I need a different gemstone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, did everyone answer this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I don't know how well my answer was, but I answered it. And this is the last question. How will you apply what you learned from previous lives to this life in your spiritual practice? Anybody? Anybody? Openness. I think. Like a slightly more open-minded. I'm I'm um so I'm kind of like the queen of swords in most of my how I present myself, probably, or how I feel I present myself. Um I am SI in Western astrology. <laughs> in true sidereal, however, I'm a what was I? A Euphucus crossed with Scorpio or something. I don't um, remember. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. I think it was that. I think I was like on the right on the cusp of Euphucus and Scorpio. Probably. Maybe. I don't have it right here. Right. In front of anyway, me. not really. But from putting it into this life, definitely. Um, when I see myself in my air sign, in in the sign that I've always kind of alluded to being um or am for western astrology sakes for that reason i tend to look for the scientific format of things um smart scans trying to run on my computer so i look for the science behind mm -hmm. things i look for the algorithm the pattern the um prove me wrong type scenario this has the synchronicities were unmistakable for me mm -hmm. in this exercise and I didn't have a closed mind I just left it open to see what comes out basically um after I realized I couldn't focus on a reason to do this I just wanted to see what comes out and what happens for me it ran through so seriously that whilst um Rochelle because she has the uh uncover your past lives deck is it mm -hmm. Yeah. So she has a deck. I don't own the deck. Um, so she very kindly, we came on live and did our chat together, uh, not live, sorry, together, um, video timed. And she put my cards out. But while she was writing my cards, I was writing things. I was getting like these psychic hits and pictures and images in my head, which were really weird. And I was just writing them down on my pad as we were going. And we were going through the cards in a separate order and just in between I was just writing as before I went to the next subject. And when we started to kind of like then um break down and analyze my cards. There were things coming out about them and we hadn't worked out who we were or anything at this point but i right. had wrote stuff down and then at the end when we started like oh well, let's look at this time period maybe we need to focus on this continent this area this um type of person um, we know it's going to be royalty somewhere in this era over here and as we looked into that things i'd written down like i had actually written south africa i had talked about um, the um being in a like felt like a safari tent so i felt like i was in a desert south africa type feel to me that gives me south africa because it's what i see in the film so my psychic hits were linked to things i would understand and recognize even if they weren't factually correct it you know they're things that i would know to be representative of it makes sense in my mind in my mind so I could see like the hat and the um you know kind of like khaki beige clothing I could see a table there was papers on the table I could see people pondering over this paper table of papers um so the attire may have been completely wrong however my person turned out they were in South Africa that's where they died um and there was something else I said I'd written down um trains I'd written down word wealthy and I had like flashes of what felt like an orient express so an expensive style of travel mm -hmm. on a train and there were links then into mine about that. And um, so it opened up my mind. It allowed me to work more psychically understanding those things I was seeing. Um, so bringing those into my spiritual practice now, I suppose, is just more open mindedness and less scientific questioning and looking for the where's the what's the why's and being able to maybe trust a little more in what I'm seeing. Yeah. What do you think about also like quantum entanglement? So like, for instance, I talked about in my video how people, um, you know, there's this thing where they're, they're said to be like soul families and they incarnate together, right? But maybe it's even a little bit more compact than that. What I mean by that is all within the second week, your character or your, your person 
died at 23, mine died at 23, it was the same week, and your your person was also connected in that life to Courtney's person. Oh, yes. Yeah, they were, weren't they? I forgot because mm -hmm. um, my person was betrothed to the person who we think Courtney was, um, her daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would have been, I would have been betrothed or my part of my being was betrothed to her daughter. All and she would have been in charge of me. And she is quite, um, not authoritarian, but she does have a certain air about her, doesn't she? When you think mm -hmm. about it. She um, commands presence. Yes, I would say that. She doesn't try to be like that. but No, no. It's natural, isn't it? She's uh, very Scorpio. So she's, um, people are drawn to her kind of thing. So yes, mm. I could see it in that regard. Yeah. No. But quantum entanglement as a whole, Carrie, do you understand what that word means? Because Carrie and I were learning about these things through, which I was <laughs> to understand some of these terminologies. <laughs> so just then when you threw that word, we were like, oh my gosh, here we I'm go. assuming that means you're like the, the different soul connections that you have in the soul yes. family. Is that what you're talking about with that? Yeah. Um, that's sort not of in that, that book that I was telling you guys about. The bigger picture. It's not just that. Like, Quantum entanglement is like all three of us right now are yeah. talking. So even though we're all in different parts of the world, our energy is entangled together. Do you see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So as we are doing these exercises, that's why I made it. That was all in the same week that yeah. these things came together. Maybe they were supposed to in order to teach us that lesson of quantum entanglement. You know what I mean? Who knows? It's but on the bigger picture of that is, like we said, we've all turned up in a group where we've had different things pop up in these past lives that we really have no idea about. But there's been somebody in the group actually who can answer those questions. So that entanglement there, like the right people in the group at the right time, synchronicity, physics. I mean, <laughs> like, there is you know, no, yeah, no clue. Man. She's like, oh, what, me? <laughs> <laughs> but that's when you know when about the when you had mentioned soul family and i kind of see it as like so we have the soul family that you know is the core and then there's an outer ring and then an outer ring and 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 so on but it's almost like you've made contracts or or some sort of agreement or whatever with all of these beings that you will have some sort of interaction with them in your lifetime at some point for a specific reason. And so like you had just said, Tony, about how we all came together at the same time to work on these lives and share them with each other and getting these different perspectives and opinions from others of, you know, what about this and what about that? I just think it was just like, you know, people can see it as divine timing, that sort of thing that, you know, we're all placed together at the same time, right time in order to share that experience with one another to, you know, enhance um, our learning as a soul, basically, of everything that we have gone through at this time or went through. And a little time. bit of validation, <laughs> too. And yeah. a little bit of validation, too, because Mary, I, I don't, I hope that it's okay to say this, but I will say in our private little chat, Carrie's like, you guys, this week, I'm going to need a little bit of help because this life is like totally out there and I don't even know what to believe. And I'm not going to say anything specific, but I was mm -hmm. the exact person to be able to help her with that because of the knowledge that I have behind the scenes of all these things, you know, <laughs> oh my God. 100% I never I I'm telling you I'm telling you when it came to that life I was ready to abandon it because I was like I don't know what I don't know what this is I don't know what I don't understand any of this I just I kept pulling cards and you know trying to write things down and I'm like I'm just gonna put it all out there to them and get their opinions on this because it was just it was too much for me. It was it was overwhelming the concept of even thinking about that, of even thinking of being some other sort of being on some other sort of existence or planet or pre-earth. That was just, it was a lot. It was a lot as me, a human, to try to understand and comprehend. So I, I would have, I would have abandoned that altogether if I hadn't had you guys in order to you know bounce that back and forth from or off of i mean and 
And that actually made the most sense, that one, didn't it, in the end? Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, some yeah. of the things that would come up, I would say, and then this would happen, like the tower, and then you go, you pull, I got the tower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like explaining everything as, I, as I'm explaining that, and you're going like. Oh. And I got like my homework from that one as well, for myself, for lists for learning. <laughs> Mm-hmm. yeah uh, that was freaky that was just freaky the way that those the images on those cards and and everything um in the dream visions tarot that i used and you guys helping me in, interpret some of those because I, that was just it was off the charts that's my one that was like woo it was like way out there it was fabulous i was like oh man i told courtney afterwards i said because courtney wasn't able to make it to that one you and missed I, and I, it. Yeah, I'm like, you missed it, man. Courtney and I would have been going, and this, and this, and this, because Courtney and I have had these discussions so many times, and you know about aliens and Anunnaki, and you know uh, all that. Oh, oh man! <laughs> so what was interesting when that was all done, and I told my husband that evening, I said, "So listen to this light." And then I shared all of that with him and what you guys said. And he goes, oh, I know who the Anunnaki is. I listen to the Y files. I'm like, I don't know any of this stuff. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, that's amazing. Uh, what about you? How will you apply what you learned from previous lives to this life in your spiritual practice? Well, my journey's not over. I am, I want to go further, even with the lives already that I have here, I want to go further and find connections with like soul family, right? Um, And really just explore some of those themes, because if some of them are karma that I still have to pay off now, then I want to figure out how I can pay that off and pay it off. You know, because I'm, I'm telling you, I don't want to come back again. I want this to be my last one. Now, we'll see whether or not that happens, but I'm going to just keep on working at it, you know? Um, so in my spiritual practice, really, like I started this a few months ago with the, the chakras and then with the shadow work, and then it led me to past life work. Um, astrology. I'm going to be using this also, thanks to uh, what you said there. I'm going to be trying to look at my chart, see where else it falls in. Also during this time period of doing this, because it opened up my spiritual practice because I created two decks during this period of time because of just seeing what kind of stuff that I could do or that I couldn't do, that I wanted to do in these readings. So I created two decks that would work really well with that. And I also, I took one deck down and I added two new cards to my deck, which is now coming to me, my astrology deck, which is Hecate and Persephone. And and I'm also adding those to my charts because that also has to do with, I feel like, women's stuff, you know, feminine Um, So it helped me in that regard, as well as looking for things that would be of like the underworld. What is the underworld? Like in between lives kind of thing and or shadow work. So that also opened up. So I've got that coming. I've already done it, but I've got a new deck coming. And I now offer that in my charts as well. So this process has really opened up a whole lot for me. And I just expect it's going to keep on doing that. And I think that it will do that for any, I would hope if you're really wanting to do something like this, I think it can open up just a bevy of things. Because I think you're starting to see through this experience just how brilliant really we are and how many things that we've done in our lives. We're not these small little people and I'm not this housewife you know, with two kids who likes dabbling in this and that and plays with the tarot. No, I'm way more than that, right? Mm-hmm. We all are. So, yeah, that's how it's affected my practice. 
there's almost like um, I've been listening to, I have Pocket FM, Pocket FM, Pocket FM on an app on my phone. And uh, I'm listening to a kind of like audio book thing on there. You get so many episodes a day that you can listen to. And in there, just listening to you then, it's, it's, a, it's a vampire one. It's not going to be anything normal, is it, for me? So it's vampire-esque. Courtney's going to love it. Um, but in there where they talk about, like, you know, reliving lives or vampires have to change lives, don't they, because they can't keep living as mm-hmm. that age in that group. So when you're talking about, you know, past lives and things, it almost has that feel of reincarnation where you have to reinvent yourself each time. And then you get to whatever you did over there. If you didn't like it, you could change it over here because nobody knows you. That's in the but with vampires they don't get the opportunity to decide when their light expires necessarily unless they choose to completely completely expire their light so it made me wonder with with you saying that do we actually get the when if so do we have that opportunity to decide that we no wish no longer wish to keep reincarnating or do you not get a choice do you have to continue to reincarnate until you become stardust again and if so when i mean speculation is i would say that we get our own choice but honestly i couldn't even freaking tell you because i don't remember <laughs> why not um, you've had enough lives but see that's a, a, another conversation that was done in the um comment section underneath my video i had talked about like um the matrix, why my deck came up is because I do believe that what we're coming into that we keep on living these past lives are is a matrix that we created ourselves. However, there are people or beings that came in, people that are in power that understand how the matrix works also and how they can use it in order to power themselves and for us to go against us by like fear mongering Um, by social media, by negative things that keep us in a certain pattern, right? Keep us paying attention to things that only just divide us, don't really help us to embrace our higher self. And when we talk about like the Ankh, and we talk about like how there are eternal beings, So could it have been like both, like what he talks about in the Emerald Tablets, where they use like like stasis units for them to recharge the body and then their consciousness would go into another body. I believe that's what the aunt did. So the way out of the matrix is remembering your past life and your past life experiences, retaining that information so that we can evolve because... The point of us forgetting is where we lose our ability to keep on evolving as quickly as we could, is my is what I believe. So doing past life work can maybe hopefully speed up the process a little bit. You know, that's that's my hope. Checking the boxes off. <laughs> right, exactly. What do you guys think? I think we, I don't, this is just my beliefs. Like you said, I have, I don't know for sure or anything, but my belief, I guess, is, or my opinion is that we have that free will. I believe that it's also carried to that other side. So I believe as a soul, we have that, um, that ability to choose whether or not we would like to incarnate to continue to learn you know, these these different lessons to continue to evolve. I also believe that, you know, my thoughts are, I heavily believe in spirit guides, though. I heavily believe in that and other higher beings in that. So I really do believe that we can get to a point of a soul evolution, basically, that we will then maybe become the guide take on a guide role, take on a a spirit guide role. So you aren't incarnating as a human being, but then you are just remaining a spiritual being, making that pact to continue to, you know, guide another spirit and, and that sort that, that's what my beliefs are. What do you think about becoming a spirit guide for a temporary period of time whilst you're perusing the menu for where you go next? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) 
Um, yeah, that could be, that actually could be a possibility. I mean, if you think about it. <laughs> they probably have more technology, like, hmm, which one do I want to do? <laughs> Yeah. Because I, I've, I've started to wonder about that through this process because my life um, was so, you know, this is what happens to you. You you die, you go to heaven, yada, 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 and that's it. You, the worms eat your body type thing. Slowly over my own adult life and, you know, trucking away religion and learning to be more open to thoughts and questions and then coming into tarot and specifically then learning more about past lives, past life work, meeting more mediums, having discussions with those people, uh, random discussions with um, people about stuff that Carrie and I <laughs> openly, honestly knew nothing really much about, but are now more expansive mm -hmm. in our understanding and now can understand a bit more and perhaps start to integrate that into our thinking and thought processes. So it's like so many mm -hmm. things. I'm like, actually, maybe it's not just all dead, set and buried. Mm -hmm. And my spirit guides, because you hear people talk about having guides and you hear about their guides evolving and changing. And they don't always have the same guide throughout. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started to wonder about this question I've just posed to you about, you know, maybe when you first die or for a little while, you do come and sit on somebody's shoulder and you guide them through because you are the best person place to do so until perhaps you do then reincarnate as something else because is that then why your guide changes i have many not very well could be because some do I'm... leave you completely don't they yes yes also I'm i've had multiple guides come in and out of throughout my lifetime but actually i can like I can link it to certain experiences. It was like, okay, well, I don't know. This is so woo. I don't know how people are We're gonna all about take this. Okay, so, all right, get to the woo. <laughs> what I believe in is um, so guides do change. And I've had multiple guides come in through my lifetime. And I, I feel like as certain things in my spirituality development, has occurred throughout my life certain guides have come in and gone out and I just feel like because they were here to help you know through that certain period to learn that certain thing you know and then now you need something or a soul if we look at the spirit guides as that soul now you need something more advanced in order to help you continue on to you know learn something that so that does fit in yeah. So that does fit into what you said about perusing the menu and dipping in to be a spirit guide <laughs> temporarily and then you know, uh, yep. moving on out. I want this one. Sorry. <laughs> See you later. I'm off. <laughs> I actually that, have that is... memory of being in a in between. And oh, wow. I was not only where I had just picked my body, but I was picking the sleeve of who my partner was going to be. And it was Egyptian. I was looking down at a whole bunch of bodies, like they were sleeves. They were not animated yet because the soul had not gone into them yet. And I was helping my lover or partner, or whoever, pick the body. Wow. I'll take that handbag there. <laughs> yeah, that one looks pretty good. I like his six pack. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice bit of leather. <laughs> exactly. It's soft. <laughs> So much like we have then in our relationships and lifetime experiences and who we meet, ebbs and flows, people come through our lives. I don't always believe people are here to be here forever and walk us through life, but they'll take you by the hand and walk you so far up the path and you'll verge again. You may go off, you may come back, you may that may be the end of your helping of each other and that has enriched your life, be it for better or worse, but it has enriched your life in one way or another to make a choice to move on. So that's how you perhaps see spirit guides coming in and out. That's, that's really quite nice to think of it like that, I think. Yeah. Thank you. And you can also take that concept that you just um, mentioned right there. Sorry, I have hair in my mouth. <laughs> but in that concept right there, when I had talked about, I think before we started this about, or maybe was it the beginning of this, about the soul family and, you know, here's your core 
And then there's the outer ring and outer ring and outer ring. So you may have made that pact with that person, that soul before they, they incarnated that, you know, come into my life at this time to help me through this lesson or to teach me this lesson or, you know, whatever. Again, it's like a blueprint. I always kind of look at it like it's a blueprint. Like, okay, when I turn 23, I'm supposed to meet this person. This person is going to teach me this one thing that's going to maybe veer me off this way, you know, and maybe this person is supposed to come in and be the bad guy or be the bad, not necessarily bad, but from my point of view, the bad guy, because we are either a hero or a bad guy to other people in our lives, just being us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So maybe that person came in to give me some adversity. So it set me down this way or this way. Or Do we write all that? I think we do. At least the big things. And then it's by our choices. That it, you know, that's, that's what I believe. Do I have proof? Mm-hmm. I absolutely not. Because <laughs> I don't remember. That's the elements, yeah. <laughs> right. We have to have element for nuance, don't we, within the lifetime that is potentially maybe pre-planned or pre sort of arrived achieved agreed at there has to be a nuance to be able to color it in a little bit while you're down there doesn't it otherwise why would you go down to a mapping out it's i suppose it's like a challenge it's like the krypton factor do you have the krypton factor am i talking about takishi's castle maybe no Mm -mm. um um, like a a game of challenge Like a, yeah, like a challenge game or something, a TV show where, you know, oh. you're given like a puzzle to do or a big puzzle, like something big, huge, not just a little one. Mm-hmm. And the challenges get done within a time frame or to break out or whatever. Maybe that's... Oh, like escape room kind of things? Yeah, maybe. Because if it's already all preset and you know where you're going, what's the point in going there? Yeah. But if you're right. just told the key facts... You'll live till you're 39 in that time. You have to, but maybe it is a game. Maybe you maybe you do get this. Maybe you get set challenges. You must achieve this, 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 and this within that time frame down there. But your limitations are this, 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 and this. Go. Do you take right. the challenge or not? Maybe, maybe it's like that. <laughs> I like that idea. Mm-hmm. I do want to say one thing. Carrie, you had mentioned, and I got to remember to do the opposite, okay? Um, but you had <laughs> mentioned about how you believe that we have a choice right? Mm -hmm. Whether or not we want to, I truly believe that also. However, I think that when we are in our higher, um, in our higher self, our highest, uh, vibration or frequency or whatever, we think, and I've had this conversation with Courtney many times. We, we joke about it, right? That we're all in our power. We're all in our, we remember everything. We're like, oh man, we, at this you know we can do this so i'm gonna do this in this life i'm gonna do this in this life oh yeah and i want to have two divorces so that i can really learn this and, and then we get here and we're like <laughs> you know like man what the hell was i thinking <laughs> so right. maybe we have a choice in our higher self thinking we can do this and then when we get here we're like oh what did i sign up for i wasn't thinking because we forget, we forget how hard it is. Yeah, maybe that's what then causes your past life lesson. Yeah, because if we always were doing it right, we would never have karma that goes from life to life. That's why the forgetting bit, if we remembered, hence the past life stuff, we would be getting <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully, and right? if you remembered it all, where's the fun in learning it as you go? Yes. What would the purpose be? Right. Oh, I mean, if you're, if you're just going to come, if you didn't remember, and what what is the purpose then? I mean, I, this goes in a whole other, you know, mm-hmm. direction of, of everything, you know, about what you really see soul as, what, you know, your beliefs in that are and and that sort of thing. But that all of of that ties, huh? We should have a take two of this conversation and bring out some of those questions. Yeah. No, we should have a second form of this on those books. I do a what? We should do this again, but after we've done those books about the soul questions. 
from um, um, the walk through the forest. Yeah. I've already done that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I started. <laughs> I haven't finished that book. <laughs> no, I'm on page. It was really. I did something. that reading. <laughs> it was that reading was really, really interesting of how mine came out. But that's. I mean, I've gotten to that point in the book anyway. So. Did you do? Mm -hmm. did well, you, you can go back thing? to my channel because I put it on my channel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe Carrie and I will just have our own little separate group. And I <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> you, you can just dig out your up, though, guys. It's been an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. So this has been fabulous. You guys are awesome. I could not have, not even think about doing this with better group of ladies so thank you so much and oh, it really was thank a you. wonderful experience yeah yes there'll be more i'm sure there'll be more and i know carrie you had talked about doing something else i'll leave that for mm -hmm. you to talk about but i'm in definitely so good so thank you everybody for joining us and thank you ladies for joining in on this and I hope if you're thinking about doing a past life, uh, past life work, that you take it very seriously. Don't glamorize it. Don't think it's going to be romantic because you're going to find some things in there that are difficult. But keep in mind, keep in mind that we are just higher spirits experiencing a human existence, right? Yeah. That's right. All right. So thank you guys. I'm going to end this now. You guys can stay quick. Thank you. Bye. Bye.